Kimberly Washburn, Curator of Education at the Florence County Museum. Welcome to March's Family Day at Home. This month, we are celebrating the birthday of William Henry Johnson. Florence native artist William Henry Johnson was born here in 1901. This month, on March 18th, it would have been his 120th birthday. To celebrate his birthday, in this project, we are going to be creating a still life painting. Both William Henry Johnson and his wife, Danish artist Holcha Kraka, were artists who painted still lifes. Now, a still life painting is a painting of objects, of inanimate objects. So, you're going to need to gather a few things from your family day at home kit and a few things from around your home. So, to start, from your family day at home kit, you're going to need your sheet of white paper. You have two watercolor strips. This is just so that to make sure that you have enough paint to complete your painting. A black crayon and a paint swab. Now, if you have a paintbrush at home that you would prefer to use, that's totally fine, but the paint swab is included in your kit. The things that you're going to need from around the house are a small cup of water, a pencil, some paper towels, and something to create a still life. So you want to create a scene that you can draw. Now, my still life is this vase of flowers. Now these are artificial flowers and just an empty vase that I had lying around. But you could use anything. It could be flowers from outside. It could just be leaves from outside. It might be things that you've collected outdoors like a pine cone and an acorn and some leaves. It also doesn't have to be something from outside at all. It could be something from inside your house. Maybe you have a house plant that you could look at or even some toys from your room. Anything that you have um, that's just an inanimate object can be used to create a still life. So my still life is going to be of this vase of flowers and to prepare to, to create my still life, I'm going to arrange my objects so that I can see them clearly and I like the view of them that I have. So I'm looking at my flowers. I'm gonna make sure that they're all arranged well. I really like this sort of circular stamp that's on this glass vase. So I wanna make sure that I can see that clearly in my view. Once I have my still life arranged just the way I want it, I can begin to draw. Now, when you're drawing your still life, you can draw with your paper um, long ways or landscape, or you can draw with your paper vertically oriented or portrait orientation. So either way is totally fine. My, my still life is tall and thin, so I've chosen to use my paper the long way. Now, as I'm preparing to draw my still life, um, just like in our portrait activity this month, it's going to be important to be very good at looking, just as good as, at looking as you are at drawing. So one of the really important parts of drawing is looking closely at what you're drawing and making sure that you're sort of traveling around the edges of your object with your eyes and that you're looking both at your drawing and at the object, looking at your drawing, then looking at the object, looking at your drawing, looking at the object, and, and carefully um, putting in those lines and correcting any mistakes that you see as you go. So just take your time and get a good drawing of your work. Now to save time for the purposes of this video, I've gone ahead and completed my still life drawing. So I have my two pink flowers and my orange flower right here. I have the vase, that little circular area on my vase, and I've drawn in the line of my table. So you can see all of that with my pencil. Now, in this painting, we're going to be creating a resist. Now this resist happens between crayon and our watercolor paint. 
Now, crayons are made with wax, and water and wax won't stick to each other. They don't mix. So anywhere that we draw with our crayon will repel the watercolor paint that we're going to put down. So what I'm going to do is take a few minutes and just outline the lines of my drawing or some of the lines of my drawing. You don't even have to do all of them. Outline the lines of my drawing with my black crayon. I'm gonna press firmly, but gently. I don't wanna break my crayon. And I want to make sure that I'm following the line of my drawing as closely as possible. You don't have to use solid lines. You can kind of use broken lines areas where maybe you don't use the crayon. This will let the paint kind of flow in and out of those areas. If you have areas with lots of really fine detail, just go nice and slow as you trace. And if there's an area that seems like it might be too small to get good detail, then maybe don't trace that part with the crayon. just maybe do those bigger shapes. And you can use the watercolor paint to create the detail in those small areas. Okay, now that I have traced the majority of my drawing with my black crayon, I am ready to add color with paint. Now, the black crayon is going to help keep the paint in some of the small shapes that we've created um, because remember anywhere we have black crayon the paint will not stick so I'm going to be using these watercolor paint strips if you have regular watercolor paint at home that you would prefer to use that's totally fine this is just what's included in your kit so this is what I'm going to be using today now these watercolor paint strips work just like a tray of watercolor paint you're going to dip your brush in water you're gonna put some water onto the color you wanna use. And I like to kinda of let that set for a second just to really sort of rehydrate the color. You can already see on my little paint swab that it's picking up the paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding paint. So once you have paint on your paint swab, you can just pick that up off of your paint strip and start adding color. Now, like with any watercolor paint, the amount of water that you use is going to help decide how dark your color is going to be. Notice how I turned my paper around when I wanted to get access to this side. That way I don't risk smearing the paint at all. So I'm gonna just put in maybe my darkest areas to start here. And then if it starts to get a little too dry, just dip your, your swab or your brush right back into the water and just pick up the paint that we need. Okay, so I've just added maybe the darkest colors now I'm just gonna get a little bit more water on my brush and maybe just dip that in water. And you can see I'm getting a much lighter paint color now that I can kind of blend in. I can use my paint swab to blend the color. I can pick up a little more paint to help with the blending as well. And I'm going to go through and add paint to my entire painting, just in this way. Do remember that if you're going to switch colors, you need to rinse your watercolor swab thoroughly. So I'm just going to rinse this. If I want to switch to do some leaves, for example, I'm going to rinse this in the water and dab it off on my paper towel. 
It might be stained a little. Mine has a little pink on it there, but no color was coming off on my paper towel, so I know it's well washed. Same thing, I'm just gonna put a little bit of that water on the paint. Let that sit for just a second. And then I'm ready to add that color. Remember, the more water you use, the lighter the color will be. If you get too much water, you can always kind of dab it off on your paper towel and then come back over and pick up some more paint. Again, when you want to switch colors, you're just going to rinse your brush really well, dab it off on your paper towel and pick up your next color. Keep painting until your entire painting is covered. You can paint the background, but you don't have to. You don't even have to paint every single part of the painting. Maybe there's an area you just want to add accent to with paint and leave the other part kind of open. For example, my vase in this particular still life is clear. So I might not want to add a whole lot of color to the painting for that clear vase. Maybe just a little bit of outline color um, to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, once you are finished adding color, which I think I am, to my watercolor painting, then just let it dry and you're ready to display. You'll notice how I did not add paint throughout the entire base or the entire table surface. I just sort of added a little bit to suggest a little color to make it interesting. You'll also notice how the paint anywhere our crayon lines are, has not the paint has not stuck to those lines. It kind of pushes away and resists, which creates a cool effect. I hope that you've enjoyed painting a still life painting with me today.